Good morning. Hi, Dr. Melody here with Fit Plus Faith. Hi. Hello and welcome to Wednesday and welcome to day 32 of our Rooted in Christ devotional. So we are going through our 72 day Rooted in Christ devotional and journal and today is 32. So if you have missed any of the previous devos, you want to make sure that you catch them because they're all so beautiful and so powerful and they're here on a playlist on our Fit Plus Faith Facebook page in the videos section. So you're welcome to go back and to make any changes, I'm um, not changes, but to uh, go back and review any <laughs> that you may have missed in the past. Good morning, ladies. As you are hopping on, definitely say hi, comment down below. Great to see you, Tanya, coming in from Las Vegas. We appreciate that. We always love to know where you're coming in from because we have a global community here at Fit Plus Faith, and so it's just beautiful to see where we're all coming together. I'm coming from San Diego, so happy to see you. And we are going through day 32 in our Rooted in Christ devotional. You can get your own devotional and journal so that you can follow along and go through those deeper reflection questions, diving into your identity in Christ deeper with the Lord. And you can do this on rootedinchristbook.com. That's where you can get it. You can find it on Amazon. That'll take you right to the Amazon link, rootedinchristbook.com. Good morning, Lynette. Great to see you. Good morning, Angela. Great to see you coming in from Alabama. Love it. So, Oh, Elizabeth from Alabama as well. Awesome, ladies. It's so good to see you. So today we're talking about the greater one living in us. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. And so we're going to dive into 1 John chapter 4 and go through that passage right there and just how beautiful and how powerful that is. So, all right, let's pray and then we will dive in. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for uh, just bringing us together in this way. Thank you for your word, your word that brings us comfort, that brings us knowledge and truth, your word that speaks to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to us through your word. We thank you, God, for everything that you have for us, all the encouragement, all the knowledge, all the guidance and wisdom and direction and comfort and compassion and love and grace and mercy and everything you have for us in your word as we get to know more of who you are more of who Jesus is, more of who the Holy Spirit is. We thank you and praise you, God, that you have left your word for us, that we have it as our companion. <laughs> we thank you so much, God, for just for, for that, for what you have done for us and what you've left behind for us. We just lift up this message to you this morning that greater are you who is in us than any that is in the world. We thank you and praise you for that, God. You are bigger and above all things. You have power over all things, all principalities and powers. You are bigger than and greater than. We thank you and praise you for that comfort today. We ask Holy Spirit that you speak to me and through me in today's devotion. Speak right to the women's hearts with what they need to hear, where they need to grow. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay, great. So, Let's start with our declaration and then we're going to dive into 1 John chapter 4. Isn't that a comfort to know that greater is the Lord that is in us than he who is in the world? Isn't that such a comfort? So our declaration today, I'll just read you the first half that you can follow along with because it's a little bit long. But if you have your own devotional, then you'll see the full thing. And then of course, be declaring that out. So every day that we do our Devo, there is a declaration that goes along with it because it is so important that we begin declaring God's truth and life over us and declaring out our identity in Christ, speaking and using our mouth and our tongue to do that because God has given us power there. So repeat after me and type this down below. I, insert your name, Melody, have the greater one living in me. I, Melody, have the greater one living in me. And of course, greater one is capitalized and that is meant for the Lord. I have the greater one living in me. If you have your devotional and you want to go through the whole declaration this morning, it says, I have the greater one living in me. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So if you want to go through the whole one, then you'll add that. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Thank you, Lord. We just thank the Lord for being with us and that he is above all things. Yes, Lynette, amen. You have the greater one living in you, amen. So we're gonna to turn to 1 John chapter four, 
verses 4 through 6. So if you've got your Bible, you've got your good book, then turn with me. 1 John chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, where we're talking about testing the spirits. Testing the spirits. That's what this little section in John chapter 4 is for. And so he says, You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them. What he's talking about in the them is he's talking about evil spirits. So if you read the previous verses, that's what he's referring to. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. That's Satan. That's the enemy. The one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. He's talking about the evil spirits. We are from God and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Wow. Listen to that again. Verse six, we are from God and whoever knows God listens to us meaning listens to God's word, right? Listens to all the letters that were written by the apostles. They listen to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. And the spirit of truth is capital S, meaning the Holy Spirit, God's spirit. This is how we know. We listen to what God has said. We study what God has said. We study this right? We hide this in our heart. We hide his scriptures in our heart so that we can recognize when there is falsehood. The only way to know is to study the truth so much that it is easy to then recognize the falsehood. Yes. Amen. Sarah, great to see you here this morning as well. You have the greater one living in you. He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. So, this is how we do it. This is how we overcome falsehood. This is how we overcome evil working in our lives is to know the truth of God and to have the Holy Spirit in you to be helping you to discern. And then you doing your part to take that authority in Jesus name, to take that authority in your life, to cast out and to rebuke any spirits coming against you anything that is going on in your mind that is of evil influence, to cast that out, to rebuke that out, to pray and to fast, to know his word, to declare God's truth and the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit being with us, helping to discern and giving us the power to be able to do so, right? It is in the name of Jesus that we have the authority and the power to do so. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So if we have our devotional... If you've got yours with you, it says, for sheep not to be led astray by an imposter, they only obey the shepherd's call, the shepherd's voice. That's the only way that they know where to go and what to do is they have so discerned the voice and the call from their shepherd that they won't follow anyone else. So we have to know the voice of our shepherd. We have to know the voice of God. What does he say? What, what are his views? What is his commands? What are his blessings, right? What are his promises? We have to know these things. We have to know our identity in Christ so that we are not fooled to be led astray by the other identities and the other things that the world wants to impose upon us, right? Yes, amen, Tanya, amen, Angela, declaring out your declaration today. Ah, so good. It is the way that we decipher falsehood is by knowing the truth of God's word, hiding it in our hearts. Wow. One of the questions for reflection says, have you been so busy trying to sort out the lies of the enemy that you've lost the still small voice of God? Learning to listen to spend time to listen, to tune your ear to his still small voice, to the moving of the Holy Spirit in your life. And sometimes it's very subtle. Sometimes it's, it's easy to decipher, very strong, but sometimes it's very subtle. But how do we begin to know? Is that my own thoughts? Is that the thoughts that I'm having because of what, you know, programming from the world or what other people have said or, you know, other things am I trying to please other people and please, 
you know, my family or please, you know, the things of the culture and things like that? Or am I doing my best to be a reflection of the Lord and to please him above all else? It's not always easy to do, but that is what we are called to do. The only way we know is by spending time with him. Would love to hear from you. What are some ways or some practices that you have? How do you discern the voice of God versus the voice of the enemy? What do you do? Is there anything that you put into practice to help you with that? Do you have your spiritual disciplines that you are doing on a regular basis of spending time in prayer, of learning, of meditating on his word, of studying his word, of getting to know him and his character, of learning to discern the Holy Spirit in your life so that when you hear him tell you to do something, you obey and you do it. Feel free to share. I would love to have you share. What do you do to help this happen? Or is the Holy Spirit convicting you that there's things that you need to begin doing and prioritizing. Something's got to give. We all have the same amount of hours in the day. So how are you prioritizing that time? What are you giving your time to? Right? Because what you give your time to, that's a non-renewable resource. That's giving your life to it. So are we giving our life to social media? Are we giving our life to Netflix? What are we giving our time and our life to? Or are we giving our life and our time to the Lord, to learning to abide, learning to be still? It's not easy. It's so countercultural, isn't it? It's not always easy, but it is a discipline just like anything else that you can begin to foster and that will grow in your life. Sarah says, listening to Christian podcasts, getting ready in the morning instead of watching TV. Yeah, that's a great idea. Right? What do you have on in the background? You know, what are you listening to? What are you allowing to come in? And then if you're allowing things of the world to come in, are you good at deciphering those things? And are you good at taking your thoughts captive? That way, if, if messages come in that are counter to the standard of the Lord, that you're able to say, no, I reject that. I don't take that in. I don't take that on. My standard is God. And does what they're saying line up to that? If not, I'm going to intentionally move away from it, right? Angela says, I so struggle with this. Get up and the first thing is to check Facebook. Thank you for sharing and thank you for your honesty. I know you're not alone in that. I know you're not alone in that. And I've certainly found myself doing that as well um, time and again. So I, I totally understand that. But it's just it just was a habit that was developed. So just like any habit, then we can begin to train a new habit. Sarah says, I work 10 hours a day. It's hard to fit in quality time in devotion and prayer. Tanya says, I keep a prayer journal and follow up with a date when the prayer is answered. I love that idea as well. Man, I've done that in the past and then I kind of fell off the train of doing that. But what a beautiful thing to do so that we can reflect sometimes when we're feeling that God isn't there or we're confused or we're doubting or we're wondering, you know, what has he done for me? I feel so far apart from him. Then we can look and see, oh, but look what he's done for me in the past, right? That's a beautiful way of writing down what he has done. So you're building up just this beautiful catalog of testimonies of who God is to you and what he has done in your life. And it helps to comfort you and reassure you when you're having those moments of questioning and doubt. So, so good. Awesome, ladies. Thank you for sharing. Continue to share, especially ladies coming in on the replay as well. We would love to hear from you too. I love that. But just, we have to just Slowly, little by little, you know, sometimes if we try to make too much of a change too quick, then it's not sustainable. So what is little by little, something that you could do that you could carve a little bit more time out for the Lord, you know, just like what Sarah was saying, I've got a really busy day. So she listens to something when she's getting ready in the morning, you know, maybe listening to something positive and uplifting or praise and worship music in the car on the commute to and from work, or maybe just learning to have silence in the car when you're alone so that you can process that time with the Lord. I, I implemented that a few years back and now I don't like listening to anything. <laughs> I like my silence. I have learned to like silence. In the beginning, it's, it's uncomfortable and it's awkward, 
but now I have just learned to love it. It is a quiet time, a peaceful time, a time where I can just let my thoughts finally you know, be fleshed out, where I can have prayer time with the Lord, where I can cry out to him or call out to him or just talk things through. Whatever I need to do, I have this beautiful quiet time in my car. So thinking of, you know, what are some things that you could just begin to do little by little? That was something I implemented years ago and I just, I just love it. It's my special private time with the Lord that happens all throughout the day when I'm coming and going. Your situation may be different. Maybe you don't get too much alone time in your car because you're constantly shuttling kids to and from, but what could it be for you? Something small, starting something small and just honoring the Lord with that. Honoring the Lord with your unrenewable resource of time. What can we do today to give him a little more of our time? All right, everybody, I love you. Thank you for being here today. If you haven't yet written down or spoken out your declaration today, then go ahead and do that now. So you're gonna say, I, insert your name, Melody, have the greater one living in me. I have the greater one living in me. And then if you wanna follow that up, you can say, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. So. You can just make it small. I, insert your name, Melody, have the greater one living in me. Or you can tag on that second line as well. Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. That is the truth of it. That is the truth of it. God will have his day and it will be glorious and spectacular. It will be incredible and, and indescribable but sometimes we can forget that that's what's coming, that that's what's ahead when we're just swirling around in the chaos of this world. But this is not the final say, this is not the end. We have the greater one than all of this living in us, preparing things for us, having a final judgment day to declare judgment, righteous judgment on all, on all the evil that is going on in the world. It is coming. We can rest in that. We can rest in knowing that this world is imperfect, will always be imperfect, but one day Jesus is coming back. There will be a new heaven and a new earth and it will be glorious. We can praise the Lord that our hope is in him. So good. Awesome, Tanya, thank you so much. Elizabeth says, just not paying as much attention to the things that don't share my views. Instead of just scrolling like Facebook and TikTok, like I used to. I typically get on Facebook to check this group or one or two more, listening only to worship music and not just the radio. The little things have added up for you. It does. You're exactly right. The little things add up. They really do. That's just, that's, that's taking your thoughts captive. That's renewing your mind in Christ. That's being intentional about what you're allowing to come in and, and spending more of that time, you know, on things that uplift you. Absolutely. Things that declare life over you. So that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing. Awesome, ladies. Have a great day. I will see you for day 33 on Friday at uh, 8.30 a.m. Pacific time. So take a moment, go ahead and tag a few friends right now in this video and share it out so that we can be sharing the good news of our true identity in Christ. Thanks, ladies. Have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.